All right, in this video, we are going to practice simplifying expressions involving uh, complex numbers and uh, specifically imaginary numbers. When you see a negative underneath a radical, a square root, the first thing you should do is understand that this is going to give us i because we know that the square root of negative 1 is defined as the imaginary unit i. So the first thing you should do is take that negative out and make it i. So that's i and then square root 100. Um, the square root of 100 is 10. So you know we're going to have 10. And then the i goes over here on the right. So 10i. OK. Now, when you have i raised to a power, there are many ways that you can do it. but um, one way is to remember that i to the fourth power is equal to 1. For that reason, any multiple of i to the fourth power will also equal 1. You know, for example, i to the eighth power is going to be 1. i to the twelfth power. All of these things are going to equal 1, any multiple of 4. Um, so if you know that, then it's easy to use that to make this simpler fast. Because um, the nearest multiple of 4 for 17 is 16. So I can break this apart as i to the 16th power times 1 extra i. Um, however, as we just saw, i to the 16th power is just 1. So that really just leaves i as your final answer. Okay? Um, some students have learned the chart method, which goes like this. Um, you can make a little chart out of it. Where you have i, and then i squared, and i to the third power, and i to the fourth power. i is just i, you can't simplify that, but i squared is negative 1, i to the fourth power is positive 1, which means i to the third power must be negative i. So you have 1, negative 1, i, and negative i. These are your only four possible answers. In this column, we think about money. Specifically, we think about quarters. 1 i is like 1 quarter, 25 cents. 2 i's, 2 quarters, 50 cents. 3 i's, 3 quarters, 75 cents. 4 i's, 4 quarters make 1 full dollar. And then, if you're using this method, you just divide the exponent by 4. So if I do 17 divided by 4, I get 4.25. The 0.25 is the part that matters, because that tells me that I'm right here, and the answer is I. All right? Anyway, number 11. Um, if, we, if we are squaring things, then we have to square everything. So we need to do 3 squared, and we need to do i squared, and we need to do radical 2 squared. We need to do each of these three things separately. Well, 3 squared is 9, i squared is negative 1, and radical 2 squared is 2. All right, the square and the radical cancel each other out. Um, parts of this, you, could, you couldn't have put this whole thing in your calculator because of the i, all right, unless you have an extra fancy calculator. Um, but if you weren't sure what radical 2 squared was, you could have put that in your calculator. So let me just show that. Radical 2, and then you could have gone, now I'm going to square it. And so that is 2 like I said. So we're just multiplying these th things together. 2 times 9 is 18, and the negative 1 makes it negative 18. All right, looking at number 12. Um, number 12 is much simpler than a problem like number 13. When we get to number 13, we're going to have to do something called the conjugate, where we do 2 plus 4i all right, you change that sign, and then you do the same thing up here, 2 plus 4i. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, 
we are trying to get rid of the i from the denominator, but um, when you just have a monomial like this, all you really have to do is multiply by i. Let's keep it simple. Uh, because if I do that, then in the numerator, I have 3i. In the denominator, I have 5i squared. Um, so that means I have 3i over, and uh, we know that i squared is negative 1. All right, so that just means that we have 3i over negative 5. And so that's the answer. It's just really quick and easy when you have a monomial in the bottom in the denominator. Okay, now back to this. Um, when you have a binomial, you have to use the conjugate. So 2 minus 4i, 2 plus 4i. You just change the sign of the imaginary part and use that in the numerator as well. Anytime you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, the imaginary parts will cancel out. And that's what we want. So let's watch that happen. All right. If I double distribute this or FOIL it or whatever you want to call it, um, when I do these first terms, I'm going to get 4. Then when I do the outer terms, 2 times 4i, that's 8i. Then when I do the inner terms here, that's going to be negative 8i. And then when I do the last terms, well, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. But i times i is i squared. Okay? Remembering that i squared is negative 1, okay, this is really negative 16 times negative 1. So um, that negative 1 is just going to change this to a positive 16. And once you've done that, then we have um, converted from i squared to this negative 1. So really, I just have this plus 16 now. Meanwhile, in the numerator, I'm just going to do a distributive property. So 3i times 2 is going to be 6i. 3i times 4i is going to be 12i squared, because i times i is i squared. Again, i squared here is negative 1. Okay, so that's going to have the effect of changing this to a negative 12. Okay? And uh, once you've done that, then no more i. All right, so really, we just have to clean this up. So first of all, in the numerator, in the proper order, we're supposed to put the real part first. So now I've got this negative 12 plus 6i. Um, down here, positive 8i and negative 8i, they cancel each other out. And now I have 4 plus 16. So that is 20. Okay, um, now we just have to write this in the form a plus bi. So what you do is you take that 20 and you write it separately. So um, I'm running out of space, so I'm actually going to go backwards and do it up here. I hope that's not going to throw anybody off. All right, so I'm doing negative 12 over 20, and I'm doing... 6 over 20 i. All right, I'm just putting the 20 under each one of these numbers. Let's see. So that would be um, both of these are divisible by 4. So that's going to give me negative 3 fifths. And um, these are just only divisible by 2. So that's going to give me 3 tenths. Okay, so this down here would be my final answer. Now, number 14, some students will be tempted to distribute all the way across, like you're going to FOIL it, you're going to double distribute, but no, 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 no. This is not a multiplication problem. This is a subtraction problem. So the only thing you're going to distribute is this negative 1, and I'm only going to distribute right here. Now, when you do this, I encourage you to recopy it without parentheses. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 7 is a positive 7i. So that's how that looks after you do distribute the negative 1. Um, meanwhile, this part over here, just 
erase the parentheses um, because there's nothing in front. So this is just negative 2 plus 3i. After that, you can just combine like terms. So I've got negative 2 plus 1, that's negative 1. And I've got 3i and 7i, that's 10i. So negative 1 plus 10i. Um, number 15, what is the real part of this complex number? Well, you've got the, this is the real part right here, and this is the imaginary part uh, right here. Um, so the real part is simply negative 31. Okay, um, yeah, nothing really to that. A, the A is the real part, and the, when we talk about A plus BI, the A is the real part, and the BI is the imaginary part. Okay, what is the result of multiplying these together? Well, just start with uh, what you would normally do. Um, like if I had n to the third power times n to the seventh power, I'm hoping you already know that that would be n to the tenth power. So that's no different because it's i. So I would start off having i to the tenth power. Um, but then it's just a matter of simplifying that. Now, if you do the factor tree method, which I would do, the nearest multiple of 4 is 8. So this is the same thing as i to the 8th power with two i's left over. So it's i to the 8th power and i squared. Um, but I know that multiples of 4 um, equal 1. So that is basically gone because I wouldn't need the 1 hanging around. So that just leaves me with i squared. And I know that i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Also, I mentioned previously about the chart method where you divide by 4. So I could have done 10 divided by 4. All right, 10 divided by 4. And that gives me 2.5. All right, focus on the decimal, the 0.5. All right, of course, you have to have the chart memorized, but there's your 0.5, so the answer is negative 1. All right, this last one doesn't really have anything to do with imaginary numbers, but I'm going to squeeze it in anyway. Um, the square root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. And then I've got over x to the third power. Well, when you divide, you subtract these. So this would be 1 half minus 3. Hello. So it's just a matter of what's 1 half minus 3. And uh, I'm going to cheat and use my calculator. 1 half minus 3 is negative 5 over 2. So that's this. So that, remember, negative power just drops you down. So that would be like 1 over x to the 5 over 2 power. Okay, so it's similar to that, but no, nope, it needs to be 1 over this. So if I go ahead and convert this, this is the power, this is the root. So I've got a square root, and then I've got the uh, fifth power. So it doesn't matter whether you put the fifth power on the outside or whether you put it on the inside. All right, but in this form, you can see that it is right here.